confidence, control, knowledge, safety, success, investing, making money, money school. What are stocks and bonds? That's where you'll start and move rapidly into the how-tos of working with a broker, buying stocks and bonds, reading the financial pages, and so much more. Greg Lewis, certified financial planner and longtime money manager, will be your guide through the financial jungle. The goal is for you to gain the knowledge you need to make informed decisions and succeed. And now your guide, Craig Lewis. Let's get started. Let's say 100 of us wanted to start a company to make videotapes. Our business plan calls for a need for $100,000. We would have several ways to raise the money. We could pass the hat and each of us put in $1,000. We'd have our $100,000. So now we're all equal part owners in the company. The first thing we would have to do is draw up a corporate charter. In our corporate charter, we have 20,000 shares authorized. Of the 20,000 shares, we're going to issue 10,000 shares. Each person gets 100 shares. You put in $1,000. So each share starts off worth $10. Each share gets one vote in how we run our company and everyone is equal. You'll get a piece of paper that shows your ownership. If our name is the ABC Company, your piece of paper could look like this. What is this piece of paper called? Stock. A stock certificate is your evidence of ownership. Now we'll need to operate our company, so from among us we will elect a board of directors. The board will hire a president who will hire employees. The employees and the president will report to the board of directors who in turn are accountable to the stockholders who actually own the company. So a year later, we're doing really well. And we feel like we could expand our company if we had another $100,000. Well, we have several different options. We could go to the bank and borrow the $100,000, or we could pass the hat again and put in another $1,000. Or we could go to an investment firm and say, find us 100 people who will loan us $1,000 each. For that, we're going to give them an IOU. That IOU is going to state several different things. If you loan money to the corporation, what are some things you'd like to know? Well, you'd like to know how much interest you're gonna get. So we state that right on the IOU. You'd like to know when you're gonna get your money back. So we state that right on the IOU. What is this IOU called? This is a bond. So a bond is simply an IOU that says what interest rate you'll receive, when you get your money back, it says how much you put in, and the name of the issuer. Now in bond terminology, the amount of money the IOU is evidence of is the face amount. The interest rate stated on the bond is the coupon rate. The date when you get your money back is called the maturity date. Another concern I would have when I loan money to the ABC video company in return for their IOU and promise of payment of interest and my money back at a time in the future is how safe is this IOU? There are several companies who analyze the balance sheets and income statements of companies and rate the safety of bonds. AAA is the safest. All government bonds and most insured bonds get a AAA rating. Then you have AA, A, triple B, double B, and B. Then you have the C's, and then you get down to the D's. D is for default. You will see that triple A through triple B's are what's called investment grade bonds. It means that those who have fiduciary responsibility to only buy quality bonds should buy triple B through triple A. Below B and through the C's is what we call the junk bond market. Only professionals who understand the junk bond market should be buying any bonds in this area right here because the corporation that is backing that really needs to be watched. Now I can take these pieces of paper, the evidence of ownership and the evidence of loanership, and sell it to someone else for whatever they are willing to pay for it. In between stocks and bonds is a form of ownership called a preferred stock. Like the bondholder, it has a stated dividend expressed in a dollar amount per share. If a company does not pay its bondholders, it's in default. If it does not pay its preferred stock owners, it is not in default. And how much yield is guaranteed to the common stockholder? Right, none. 
The owners bear the risk and the reward. Now, preferred stock may be cumulative in regards to dividends. Cumulative works this way. Let's say it pays $5 a share per quarter and the company is not able to pay the dividends because the corporation just doesn't have the cash flow. So we go four quarters without paying dividends. How much do we have to pay the preferred stockholders if we're going to pay the common stockholders anything? Right, $25, five, 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 and five. So the preferred stockholders are preferred in the sharing of profits and the unpaid quarters accumulate. That's cumulative. What is convertible? Convertible is often used as a sweetener when a stock is being issued because a preferred stock might not be marketable. So they say, okay, we're going to allow you to share in the profits in the company and the rise in the stock price by having the ability to convert your preferred into common. The preferred might pay 10%, and that 10% will be an income paid quarterly as a dividend. Let's say the preferred stock is trading at $10 and the common is trading at $5. It's paying about a 10% yield. There is no reason to convert the preferred into common. But now the common has done real well and it's gone to $10 a share. There's probably still no reason to convert. $10 with no dividend versus $10 with a 10% dividend. But now the common goes to $15 and we can take our $10 stock that is paying 10% and convert it into a $15 stock and that is a 50% return. So the conversion feature is always a sweetener on a preferred issue that might not be real marketable to try to make it more attractive to the public. In common stock and preferred stock, the dividends are paid quarterly. So we have to understand the X dividend date. Each quarter, the board of directors elects a date of record. That date of record says that the shareholders who own the stock as of that date will get the dividend. So what we've done, since that would be an administrative nightmare, is we've backed it up four business days. Take a look at this time frame. We have Monday through Friday. If Friday is the record date, Monday will become what we call the X dividend date. That is the day that the stock will begin to trade without the dividend. If you bought the stock on the Friday before that Monday, you will get the whole dividend, not just a part of it. If you buy it on the Tuesday after that date, you don't get any of the dividend. Normally, the stock will drop down the amount of the dividend on the X dividend date. Now, stocks pay dividends, normally quarterly. Bonds pay interest, normally semi-annually. If you bought a bond that pays semi-annual interest and you bought the bond right before its interest payment, how much of the interest would you be entitled to? Not all of it. Stocks go ex-dividend. Bonds pay the interest that has accrued to the bondholder. Now, the company that has issued the bond is only going to pay on those semi-annual dates. So if you're buying and selling, taking the piece of paper that we call a bond, and we're going to sell it to someone else, we have to figure out who deserves the interest. So what we have is what we call accrued interest. If I buy a bond right before it pays its interest, I'm going to pay the price of the bond plus the amount of the interest that has accrued. If I sell a bond right before the semi-annual payment, then I should receive the interest from the beginning of that time period until I've sold that bond. And so I get the accrued interest. 